this example, we'll take a quick look at creating a locator or inset map for our main map. You see here we have Cache County, Utah, we have some roads, and we have milepost markers. For this map example, we'll assume that this is going to be our basic data and we won't change any symbology. In your table of contents, you'll notice that we have one data frame called layers. I'm going to insert a new data frame and I'm going to rename that data frame overview. I'm going to rename our original data frame AOI. Note that our data here, our vector data, has disappeared because our overview data frame is now active. You can tell that it's active because it has a bold text here in your table of contents. I'm going to go ahead and add some data to our overview. I'm going to add the Cache County boundary. And I'm going to add the boundary for the state of Utah. A locator map gives our users the ability to see where our area of interest is generally in relation to other places. So I'm going to go ahead here and change some symbology from the state of Utah shapefile. Okay. And I will leave this Cache County as it is. Go ahead and reactivate our AOI. Here's our data that we wish to make our map with. And now I'm going to switch over to my layout view. Now we're in the layout view, you can see that we have two different data frames displayed here on top of each other. We can simply click and drag these out of the way. I'm going to make this data frame just a little bit bigger, fit the page. Note that each time I select one of these data frames over here in the table of contents, it becomes active make my Utah data frame a little smaller so this is my inset or locator map I'm going to change the scale here a bit so that we can see the focus of our main map which is Cache County make a few minor adjustments okay I'm ready to just go ahead and make sure that our proper data frame is active, our AOA data frame, and we're going to insert a legend. I'm going to accept all the defaults here for this example. Note that these are not very descriptive legend items, so I'm going to click in here and change the name of each one of these. Mileposts. Cache County Roads, and Cache County. Okay, that's a bit more descriptive. I'm going to go ahead and place that on my map. I'm going to go ahead and insert a north arrow. Place it as you see fit. Now we'll add a scale bar, change the properties, change this to 3, we'll change this to kilometers. Change the text that a little bold and place it on our map. Ideally you would also put projection information, the date that this was created, and also the person who created its name. I'm just going to go ahead and put a title in. I'm going to align it just to make sure it's in the middle. Choose a different text that suits my needs. All right, 
in our inset locator map here, I'm going to go ahead and label the state. Adjust that label a bit so it's a little more readable. And for the purposes of this example, you can now see how that inset map was created. And you could put any amount of data in there that you wanted. Generally, for a locator map, you want to keep it simple and concise so people can understand easily what you're looking at.